Hey guys, it's Nate, doing another uh, day hike here. Today I'm attempting to summit Gold Hill up in up by Towski Valley and Red River, New Mexico. And if weather allows, I'd also like to do Gavilan Mountain, Galavan, can't remember what it's called, also known it's peak 12,040 feet. Doesn't really have an official name. But um, yeah, I just kicked off from the Towski Valley, like I said. It's about 5.15 in the morning, early July. So there's a little bit of twilight as you can see, but uh, still kind of headlamp level brightness. Um, an alternate title for this video could be how I learned to stop worrying and love monsoon because the sky is supposed to open up come 11 or noon which is why I'm getting such an early start got up at 3 o'clock drive up from Santa Fe and I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm on top of Gold Hill by before 9 would be awesome well pathetically I stepped in water because one of the logs was pretty much just gave out under me the second I stepped on it. Uh, going a little too fast, but that's all right. We're in churro runners. Even with this added moisture, they should dry out. So, I mentioned added moisture. You know, a good segue to talk about that obviously the forests in New Mexico are back open. They pretty much all opened back up a week ago today, last Friday. And because of that, I kind of expect it to be a little not very crowded. You figure a lot of the out-of-state and in-state people who maybe had trips planned kind of changed their plans since the closures. I mean, the official closure end date was actually December 31st, but the Forest Service was saying that they intended to open it back up on July 18th. And then on top of that, we ended up getting a pretty hefty early monsoon. That kind of, uh, here's a game camera. Get some pictures of me. Hey. And uh, so, so anyway, um, I actually kind of expect this to be a pretty dead hike. It, it is a Friday, but it's summer vacation season. I only saw a couple cars at other trailheads. There's, you know, four or five trailheads on the road up to the ski area. And um, there weren't, it didn't seem like there were many people parked for hiking. Uh, I guess it's like impossible to tell, but everybody was kind of parked by the ski area. Not so much the, uh, not so much this parking lot. Okay, so I think we're taking the Long Canyon Trail up. Yep. So this is the shortest way. And a lot of people do Gold Hill as a loop. They come up Long Canyon and come down wherever the other one is. So I, what I'm trying to do, go up Long Canyon, bag Gold Hill, come back across the Lobo Peak Trail. And I think, and then I go down and that spits me out in the Gavilan Trailhead. And then I have about a two mile road walk. Uh, if it's pouring, I might try to hitch it. It's only two miles, but especially if there's thunder and lightning, uh, won't be the most pleasant experience. So I think the trail I elected not to take, if I remember correctly, is the Columbine Twining National Recreation Trail. And I think it's kind of a cool piece of history about this area that it's first kind of like Anglo, uh, culture or Anglo history 
has to do with gold mining. Obviously, the name of the peak, Gold Hill. And uh, so Columbine, I think these days is a campground, but it used to be a mining camp on the road to Red River. It's kind of on the north side of Gold Hill. And Twining was a mining camp on the south side of Gold Hill, where actually Towski Valley is today. So yeah, Towski Valley used to be a mining camp called Twining. At least that was what it was right before it became Towski Valley. And I think it was bought up, the property was created uh, as a ski area in like the 60s. And it's actually a pretty interesting story. I'll include a link below from like Outside Magazine or maybe it was Outdoors Magazine, can't remember. But they did a pretty interesting story about the history of Towski Valley. Okay, I'm making good time, so I'm gonna stop for a second, point out some edible plants. Uh, I'm not an expert. Disclaimers below. So this is Chimaha, or I guess at lower elevations it's Chimaha, but up here is mountain parsley. And you can see it, it looks very parsley-like. It pretty much tastes like parsley. Sometimes it kind of has like more of a cilantro bent. The root is really good. The root is I think the best part. It's slightly sweet, kind of tastes like turnip. Now we're a little late for spruce tip season but you can tell there is some new growth. And if you find some of these tender ones, I just ate one a minute ago, pretty much tasted like lemon. It doesn't taste bitter and piney. I mean, there's a little bit of pine, obviously, it's a pine tree, but it really just tastes like lemon. Uh, it's actually pretty good. So, yep, continue on. The thing that's slowing me down right now is these obnoxious down trees. Um, obviously in a wilderness area, they can't bring chainsaws unless it's like a fire emergency, basically. So, um, I mean, I guess that doesn't make, mean much for all the fire restrictions we've had, but given that most of the state was under fire restrictions for the last month and a half, maybe they just weren't sending people out here to clear the trail. Um, a lot of it looks sort of old. So that's really the only thing slowing me down right now. I'm making a great pace. I am very optimistic that I will be at Gold Hill um, in relative no time. Yeah, I just got out of a really nasty deadfall section. Probably went for like a tenth of a mile. Finally out of it. Had to climb over a lot of trees. You can see it's not really done. But at least this is manageable. I don't have to get 50 yards off trail. Uh, might have been better if I had caught it earlier. Kind of gone uphill instead. I went downhill, which is, it's always kind of a bad idea when you're avoiding deadfall. Because, you know, you can look downhill and see kind of a route. But the problem is that, oops, sorry. The problem is that you're always losing elevation, which just makes it harder. And I need a free hand again. The trail is this way. We're getting some views at the above tree line area. Crazy echo. I don't know if that comes across on camera. Anyway, I believe that is unranked peak 12 to 17 or something. So this is gonna be the Lobo Ridge that we traverse to get to Gavilan. Weather looks not bad right now, a little cloudy, uh, overcast, but nothing that looks like it's turning into thunderheads. I checked the weather. I actually have pretty good uh, 4G here. And the weather shows that the strong likelihood of rain has kind of been pushed back to like noon before it was supposed, supposed to get above 20% around 11 uh, or 10. Now it's about noon. So hopefully that means we have some good time on our side. But it doesn't mean we're going to slow down because those down trees are bad. And who knows if we'll run into something else like that. Of course, the amazing view is starting to open up. That'd be uh, the Bavarian stuff down there. You can kind of see the road up to the Williams Lake Trailhead. That's Wheeler Peak right there, dead center. The uh, tallest mountain in New Mexico to the right of that uh, Simpson Peak. And then this is where I kind of get confused because I'm not too familiar actually with the Towski Valley. 
we've now dead center. That's uh, whew, this is my breath. Uh, Lake Fork Peak. And then to the right there is Kachina Peak, I believe. And then Viacito Mountain, somewhere around there. Um, there we go. So obviously this view will open up. This the Hama is way in the background. So awesome views. I'm very excited to be up here. Wow, it is beautiful up here. Uh, lots of clouds, like I said. I don't, you know, I don't really perceive them to be thunderheads or anything like that. I think we're in the clear for quite some time. Maybe we'll get a drizzle, but I don't think we're gonna get thunder and lightning for a couple hours, a few hours at least, hopefully. Um, it's actually pretty wet up here. My feet can feel the moisture wicking away from the plants as I walk. Um, you know, I, I kind of set a goal for myself when I was down at the bottom to be at 12,000 feet by seven o'clock. Missed that mark a little bit. I think I'm about at 11.9, 11 11.950. 11 it's about 7.05 a.m. Uh, I kind of, I chalk that up to all the deadfall. I mean, that was uh, a lot worse than I expected for what's supposed to be a maintained trail. Our goal is pretty much dead ahead of us. I don't think that's the actual summit of Gold Hill. Um, I believe it's beyond that, but if we're at 12,000 feet, which we gotta be close to now, We've got about 700 extra feet of elevation gain to go and maybe about a half to three quarters of a mile. So I'm pretty optimistic that around 745 maybe we'll be up there and uh, then we can assess whether we're continuing on to Gavilan. Okay, Gold Hill on our sights. And we're also comfortably above tree line. So in some ways, this is the point of no return. If I start hearing thunder, I'm gonna turn around and scurry back down to the tree line whether or not I've made the peak. So wish me luck. Big horned sheep dead ahead. Cool. Hopefully they kind of stick around as we move closer. We'd love to get a close up view. Yeah, so big horned sheep. I've never, uh, fingers crossed, hope I don't just drink myself right now, but never heard of a big horn sheep in this area like goring anyone or anything you know, a while ago so we looked up what to do if they get aggressive and I essentially found nothing which kind of implies to me that they don't really get aggressive unless you're really bothered with them but um I believe big horn sheep in this area had gone extinct um or been cold or whatever by like the eight or the 30s and uh, they were actually reintroduced from herds, I think in Wyoming and surprisingly the Sandia Mountains. May, not impressed. Doesn't get much better than this. This is incredible. Complete with bighorn sheep. Down there, we see Goose Lake, which you can actually drive up to. It looks pretty dead. So I think my theory about kind of word taking time to spread is pretty accurate. Not windy whatsoever. Sun came out to play. This is incredible. So I'll take the time here to explain what we're looking at. Obviously Gold Hill right there. So we scoot to the left. And the sheep are loud when they jump, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm actually not totally sure what that is. It's not the Latier group. Perhaps that's uh, Big Costilla Peak. And over there is Little Costilla Peak. See, it's the Valle Vidal we're looking at in the valley. Kind of misty and cool. And man, this is just incredible. Uh, way out there, I think it's Culebra Peak in Colorado, a 14er. You can see maybe a glimpse of West Spanish Peak way out there. It probably doesn't come out on camera. There's our friend, the Bighorn Sheep again. So Goose Lake, I mentioned you could drive out to. I actually think it's like the second highest point in the state that the average person can drive up to. It's like 11,700 feet or something. Only point higher is Cerro Vista, south of here. And, uh, you know, there are some other roads like to service ski areas, but obviously the average person can't get up there. There's locked gates. So we got 
Baldy Mountain, which of course I did, I did that as a beer review along with uh, Touch Me Not, Green Mountain. It's probably Mount Phillips right there, which you guys kind of voted on this, you know, my loyal followers on Instagram, go check me out there if you haven't already. I kind of did a poll to say, should I do Mount Phillips, a P2K towards my P2K goal, or should I do Gold Hill? Um, so Wheeler Peak, can't really see the rest of the uh, eastern portion of the Wheeler group, but I already pointed out these peaks. I think that's actually Sarah Vista right there. Um, see the Wheeler or the Truchus group way out there. I think that's Sarah Chimayosos. Pecos Baldi. Da, 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 da. That's the Jemez. I incorrectly identified something else as the Jemez. And there's Lobo Peak back there, which my wife and I did. Um, this is probably like July or June of 2020. And that was uh, before I was of the mind to film my day hikes. But this is just an awesome view, you know. I, and I hope that... I hope that by watching this, you can see, obviously during the cooler months, during the cooler months, I mostly uh, lower elevations, further down south. It gives the impression that New Mexico is uh, a desert written state, which of course it is. I'm not denying that, but definitely you get up here and it's just beautiful Alpine scenery. Uh, underrated, but I kind of like it that way. You know, every time I go to Colorado, I realize how lucky we have it when, when I see the, the crowds. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up and finish this hike. I'll see you guys at the top. A little bit more peak identification before we get to the top. I believe that's Flag Mountain um, over there. Doo -doo 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 -doo. San Antonio Mountain, which of course I summited back in, uh, I think it was February. So check that video out. Um, I wanna see this Conejos Peak in Colorado. So this entire range essentially is in Colorado. It's the uh, kind of like this southern portion of the South San Juans or the San Juans. And it might even be that those jagged ones way in the distance are 14ers out by Durango, but I'll have to verify that on Peak Finder when I get home. Okay, we are almost at the top. Saw some marmots crawling around. I was hoping to get them on film, but you know marmots, they uh, are sort of shy. Here we are, the summit. So that's the Latier group, for sure. There's the Blanca group, way out there. Um, Ute Mountain, so I summited in December 2020. Got a video on that, so a little bit bloated, but a good video nonetheless. There's the Molybdenum mine down there. You see we are above at least some clouds. Beautiful, let's go, come come reach the summit with me. Huzzah, we've conquered Gold Hill. Haven't been struck by lightning, at least not yet. There's a pika down there, or maybe just a chipmunk. But uh, I'm gonna look for our summit register and then we'll, I already pretty much pointed out everything. So we will uh, head down the mountain a little bit after I kind of get a break for a minute. All right, well, we're leaving Gold Hill. Um, I'm not, I'm gonna wait to make a decision on Gavilan until we're at the trail intersection, but you know, if it's like this, I'm, I'll definitely do it. Nothing really looks too scary. Maybe some of the stuff out here behind me might turn into something sketchy, but I don't think that'll happen anytime soon. It's only eight o'clock. All right, well, we're roughly at the intersection and uh, I think the cloud coverage looks pretty good. It's not even 8.30. Um, you know, even if it starts storming at 10, I have a hard time believing it's gonna take me more and then an hour and a half to do this circuit. So like, I, I believe that's Gavilan. That might be 12 to whatever. Here's Gold Hill. Pretty convinced now that that is not Gavilan. I think my initial theory was accurate. That is point 
12 2 whatever and Gavilon is behind it. Okay, so it didn't happen. Once you get a video, here I am on peak 12 2 17. And I think I was pretty sure that's Gavilan right there. Oh, I am beat. Okay, we're beginning the push up to Gavilan, uh, which looks uh, not difficult in a technical sense, but it is pretty steep. I think it'll be similar. <coughs> I found 12 2 17 to be pretty tough in terms of the uh, gradient. So I don't think uh, just looking at it, this one will be much better. Huh. We did it. We made it to Gavilan. So there's Gold Hill. Trace our way over. Then we were at 12 2 17, which I forgot to mention is not a ranked. 12er, at least on peak bagger. Though, I mean, I'm sort of surprised it's not. It felt like over 280 feet of gain. But this one is ranked. So this is two more, two more 12ers. Two more 12ers to the list that I've completed. I think there's something like 46 in New Mexico and I've done, at this point, probably like 18 or 20 of them. So you can see the trail winds down here. Uh, these clouds are going a little bigger. It's still like in the early stages. We probably got like an hour, hour and a half before monsoon starts setting in, but uh, this is like the window where all bets are off in terms of could be 30 minutes from now. So we're gonna head down, get below tree line. And I see the single track down there. This is my destination. Just gotta get around here and then I'll be below tree line, which is not bad. Those definitely look like, maybe not so much that one in the front, but that those two, those, they kind of look like, they look like future thunder clouds, that's for sure. Okay, we are at the intersection. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do Lobo Peak to Gold Hill. What I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, hike down here, get to kind of where it levels off that Meadows area. I'm not thinking it's gonna rain like instantly or anything, but it's definitely gonna rain sometime in the next hour, I would assume, and set up there, have some lunch and water. I know I've earned it. And then uh, be begin the rest of this hike, which is gonna be a hike in and of itself. I've got a hike probably, my guess is about, my guess is about three miles to the trailhead. And then on top of that, another two miles road walk. And like I said, I, I might try to hitch it. We will see, it depends on where it spat me out. I had a hard time figuring out where the Galavan Trail was or Gavilan Trail was while I was driving up because it was so dark. Okay, I'm hanging out at this Nice campsite, some rushing water over there. Amazing view below tree line. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not camping. <laughs> I gotta walk back to my car, but it's a nice place to stop, just relax. Probably won't film much, if anything, until I get back to my car, just cause, or I, I should say until I get to the road. It's cause I'm not sure, I, I don't think there'll be too much interesting to look at. So with that said, I'll probably use the Probably use me road walking as a closing shot or something. So with that said, if I don't see ya, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this scenic tour of New Mexico, Northern New Mexico's high country. I think it's really something special and something that a lot of people don't know really exists. So thanks. Well, as you could tell, obviously we made it back to the car. It did, uh, did not feel like two miles and 300 feet. It felt like a lot more, but we're here. And I think the total distance for the day was 13 plus miles. Didn't end up raining on me, which is pretty crazy. So good day all in all. Thanks for joining me.